Hello, uh, for those of you I've not met, my name's Alain Lefebvre and I'm the manager of workforce programs for the Construction Association in Nova Scotia. Um, first off, I wanna welcome, thank you all for joining us uh, for what is gonna be our first uh, in a series of construction uh, career Q&A sessions. Uh, I do hope everyone is safe and doing well. Uh, I wanna take a quick moment as well to thank all of our program partners for their continued support of uh, both the Building Futures for Youth program and the CANS Construction uh, Connection program. Uh, obviously their support is, is what allows initiatives like this one to continue. Um, the purpose of these sessions to let you know is to allow students and you know, anyone really to explore and learn more about construction careers from the safety of their own homes or offices. Um, and also more specifically, uh, to allow people to ask questions and, and get answers directly from the people who have boots on the ground. Um, I mean, really anyone can Google carpenter or project manager or any construction career occupation and, and get a definition. Um, but we don't often have access uh, to the experience like that of our, our guests today and uh, hopefully the guests that we're going to be having over the coming weeks as well. So um, are really excited to be doing this some very quick kind of virtual housekeeping. Uh, it is kind of a Q&A format that we're looking at. Uh, the Building Futures for Youth team as well myself have prepared a number of questions for Howie. Uh, we did also receive some questions in advance uh, by email, um, but we do also strongly encourage anyone who's watching the session today uh, to ask any questions that you have using the Q&A function that you should see on the bottom of your screen. Uh, I will do my absolute best to monitor that as closely uh, as I can and make sure that we don't miss anyone and any questions you may have. Um, I will let everyone know as well that this session is also being recorded uh, and is going to be made available for students and anyone else who's interested in viewing at a later date. And uh, we're hoping to kind of compile and have a library of these that will exist on our website, which is www.buildingfutures.ca. Um, so please stay tuned for that. Um, I will add as well, we are obviously live and as good as we are getting at using these platforms, uh, we are very much still kind of at the mercy of cyberspace. So please bear with us if we do run into any IT hiccups uh, or if my children enter the room again, which is extremely possible, uh, we'll, uh, we'll do our best to keep trucking along. So each one of these sessions uh, is, in, is gonna focus on uh, a specific construction industry professional, a local construction industry professional, um, but also on a specific construction trade or occupation. Uh, and our guest today is, is not only a regional director with Lindsay Construction, he's also a Red Seal certified carpenter. Um, so a part of the conversation is certainly going to focus on the carpentry trade. Uh, I wanted to give kind of a very quick uh, bare bones introduction to the carpentry trade uh, for any students or young people who are joining us today. Uh, and again, I'm not going to get into it in a ton of detail because I want this session to be a little bit more of, of the ins and outs and, and the experience, obviously, of our guests. But just to set the stage a little bit as far as carpentry goes, what is carpentry? Well, carpenters build, install, maintain, and repair structures made of wood wood substitutes and other materials. Pretty simply put, and I know that by no means uh, encapsulates all the work that a carpenter does, and I think Howie will be able to shed a little bit of light on that for us later. Um, but some of the things carpenters might be responsible for, you know, building foundations, installing floor beams, laying subflooring, installing walls, roofing systems, uh, fitting and installing trim, door, stairs, molding and hardware, uh, measuring, cutting, joining materials made of wood, uh, and repairing and renovating wooden structures. And again, that's only a small kind of snapshot of what carpenters might do, uh, but just to set the stage a little bit. Um, how one becomes a certified uh, journey person carpenter, although it's not a compulsory certified trade, 
Uh, it is a trade that uh, where apprenticeship training is available. Um, so either through a pre-apprenticeship program through the community college or another educational institution uh, or through a direct entry uh, apprenticeship is the most uh, common pathway to a career in carpentry. And if those are terms, if that's language that anyone here isn't familiar with, uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to, to reach out to me uh, or even, you know, visit our website, you can learn a little bit more about that as well. Um, as far as wages, you know, a, a couple of reasons that I think someone may want to consider a re career in, con uh, in carpentry if they're not already. Uh, average wages across Canada for a carpenter anywhere between 24000 uh, and 66000 a year uh, average salary, uh, a salary that is certainly higher than the average annual salary of an average Nova Scotian. So a great opportunity to make uh, an excellent living, excellent benefits. As far as job opportunities go, job demand, uh, looking across all industries over the next decade to quote Build Force Canada, uh, carpenters are an at-risk supply, uh, meaning that, you know, based on forecasted work that will be taking place, there may not be enough carpenters to perform the work. So another uh, reason and opportunity uh, to consider a career in construction, if, or in construction and certainly in carpentry, if you're not already. Um, so that's just a very kind of quick snapshot again uh, on carpentry and what carpentry is. Um, and what we'll do now, you're probably getting sick of hearing me, is, is we'll jump in finally uh, and have a conversation with our guest. And our guest today, uh, is Howie Dwaron, and Howie, I'm going to apologize in advance, well, not in advance, I guess it's after the fact for likely slaughtering your last name, um, but as a Lefebvre, I, I know a thing or two about what that's all about. Uh, Howie is a regional director for the Cape Breton region for Lindsay Construction, uh, and he is also a certified journey person and Red Seal certified carpenter, uh, and I want to thank Howie, and I want to thank Lindsay Construction as well uh, for making the time for us this afternoon. Thank you very much, Al. Glad to be here. Excellent. Um, so I guess first off, Howie, if you don't mind, could you tell us a little bit maybe about Lindsay Construction, um, sure. you know, what Lindsay does and, and a little bit maybe about your role? Yep. Sure. Well, Lindsay Construction uh, has been around uh, for most of the people listening forever, uh, 60 years. <laughs> so it outdates probably everybody online. Uh, long history of uh, uh, doing quality work um, on the mainland uh, where they started up in, in Dartmouth. Uh, we currently do tilt uh, uh, pre-engineered buildings. We have a roofing division. We do our own framing. We do uh, a lot of our own um, form work. So we, we take care of a lot of the, uh, the carpentry uh, aspects and we do a lot of that. Uh, in the past recent years, we've branched out and reached into New Brunswick, uh, which covers PEI. We have offices in Newfoundland, and recently, two years ago, we moved into the Cape Breton region. So every region has a little different um, uh, vibe to it because the the, uh, the environments and the uh, unionized atmospheres depends on what's going on each in uh, for each division. Uh, but that's pretty well. Lindsay is in a short snapshot is uh, about I'd, I'd uh, recommend anybody to go online and check us out online the, the, the uh, our website does a lot better job describing it than I do yeah. absolutely great uh, certainly a cans member and a, a big supporter of a lot of our programs and initiatives specifically building futures for youth yep absolutely. So what's your current what, what can you tell us a little bit about your role at Lindsay Howie well currently I'm a uh, uh, Regional Director for Cape Breton. Uh, so all operations I oversee on Cape Breton Island. So uh, I got a heavy hand in the hiring of our project managers, coordinators, um, our superintendents, even I, I like to have a hands-on with our carpenters and our laborers. I like to um, dig in and find out who we're gonna be hiring, uh, who we're gonna have working for us, make sure it's, it's right um, and then I, uh, I follow through, I help with the estimating. Um, so when we, we actually just closed the tender, that was, that ate up uh, most of my morning right till first day <laughs> I got online. Uh, so again, it's, it's, uh, it, it's hands, uh, hands on everything, 
but trying to keep the fingers out and letting everybody do their job properly, just more or less. That's that's what I uh, figure I get up in the every morning to do. Yeah. Excellent. It's very interesting. Um, so, Howie, I, I want to ask you a little bit uh, now about kind of your kind of career progression and how you got to where you are now. Um, but I, I guess the first question I would have is, thinking back to when you were young, in high school maybe, did you have an idea at that point in time that you wanted to work in construction? No, no, and it's really, it's kind of funny because I come from a long line of carpenters. Okay. Uh, but I never clued in that I thought carpentry was a profession. Uh, I kind of just, because every, almost every uncle I had, my grandfather, my father were carpenters, I just thought it was like a, um, you know how fishermen kind of become fishermen. If you're a fisherman's son, you become a fisherman. If you're, you know, I just kind of thought it was that natural progression. And I just kind of, I never really thought about it um, until um, I graduated high school and I got into university and I needed to make money. And my father uh, was working as a superintendent. He got me a job um, as, uh, as a carpenter's apprentice. And I got a little bit of, I got bitten. That's when I got, that's when I got bitten. Uh, and then, uh, university, I didn't, I didn't like it. Um, I'm glad I went cause now I don't have that question back in my mind. Should I have gone? Should I stuck in longer? It wasn't for me. Right. Uh, it just, it's, everybody's in uh, an individual and it just, yeah, I didn't, I didn't like it. Um, so which I kind of found um at the time i was um i was dating my wife uh and she was the same she didn't like it either she went to nscc yeah. and one day she came home with the pamphlet and i was looking through it and i was like carpentry you can take carpentry and it's like the light went <laughs> off and um i got in the next year and here we are <laughs> yeah. so, so you say that it bit you was yep. what what was it that kind of bit you that drew you to the industry or to the trade um there's a lot you know it, it's it's a just the sense of teamwork when you get in um when you're working with a bunch of people that are in the same mindset they got a job to do uh the the project i i got on i was uh, hired as a first year apprentice so every dirty job and i was the boss's son so it was clear that I was going to get every dirty job, uh, and I did. Um, it just, um, it really, the sense of going to work and the accomplishment. So at the end of the day, you could see that that wasn't there this morning. Yeah, we're leaving. It's there's something there. It's tangible. It's uh, it's it's not an imaginary piece of work. Um, um, and I still get the enjoyment. Like I still drive around. Um, of all the projects, like even when I'm in Halifax, I'll, I'll, I'll I make a, a a plan. The indirect way to get to Lindsay's office takes me by a couple of jobs I did just so I can check up and see that building, see how it's standing up. So it's a, it's a good sense of accomplishment. So. That's really cool. That's really interesting. Um, you mentioned Howie that you went to NSCC. So it sounds like you took the pre-apprenticeship route uh, through the community college. Correct. Right, yeah. Okay. Do you remember, is there anything about that process that you recall that might stand out to you? Uh, yeah, it, uh, we're a little unique. We were the first class that went through the one year program. Okay. Uh, it was very intense. I remember thinking I came out of university. I thought I'd be able to go into, um, community college and thought, okay, this is going to be easy. It was going to be a cakewalk because you're going from university to community college. You assume, um, it's going to be easier it was actually probably double the work because they, uh, in one year program, they, they doubled the modules we were supposed to do. So there was a two year program finishing up and I think they only had to do 36 modules and we ended up had to do 72 in one year. And being the first year, the pressure was on, the instructor was tough and we worked, we had homework, we had projects, there was reading, it wasn't, going in and playing with a skill saw or something. It was actually pretty in depth and it, it, I really, I enjoyed it. I couldn't, I, I, I couldn't get over it actually. And, and I, I felt that was great because I, you know, you pay to go and I was getting my value. I was getting value for the dollar I spent. Yeah. 
Excellent. I, I got a question coming in on the Q&A, Howie. Um, and that question is, how much of an advantage do you feel you had uh, having a family in the trades coming with a little bit of background knowledge into it? Um, well, that's, that's a really great question. I, growing up, my father never got me to do any carpentry projects because at that time when I got old enough, my father had moved into a superintendent role. He was working on larger sites. Like when I was going to high school, he was building the St. Martha's Hospital. So he couldn't get me involved. So okay. it wasn't it wasn't something that he would grab me by the shoulder and drag me out. We're going to work. He couldn't right. do it. So I never I never had the advantage of getting any uh, advanced skill training. Uh, yeah. But when I did go to school and I'd come home, my grandfather was living with us then, and I'd, I'd come home after NSCC and sit in the rocking chair beside my grandfather. We'd talk for about two hours almost every day. And he'd tell stories about how he was trained way back and how long it took and how long it took to build a house. And we just trade stories. And then once I started to get some knowledge, I uh, got a little bit of a knowledge base. Then I reaped the uh, rewards of having a family uh, that was virtually all carpenters. Cause then I could start getting into these conversations and I had a resource. I could go, I could go to my father and say, like, how do you, you know, how do you cut, you know, how do you build a cricket? Like, I, I, I you know, you, just little questions, They're the little details that a lot of people didn't have people to go to, but I had uncles and even my grandfather was great. He taught me a, a lot of what I know on how to use a framing square, uh, all the technologies that you can do with a framing square. Yeah. So. Very cool. Um, another question, Howie, that came in over email prior to the session um, is, can you tell us a little bit about your first full-time position uh, as a journey person carpenter? Journey person carpenter. Yeah. Way back when. Well, I think what I can remember, uh, I actually, that I, I think it was when I went to work at the Goldboro gas plant which is kind of depressing because I think they're starting to thinking about decommissioning because it was built 25 years ago or something like that. So I think that was, I believe that was the first, uh, uh, my job as a journey person. Um, and it was, it was a good job. There's a lot of, uh, we, I went to work for a general contractor. So I got to see, uh, I got a little more experience with uh, commercial door hardware and stuff like that. So it was a, it was a, my first taste of industrial work actually. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Um, interesting. I mean, cause you, you mentioned going back 25 years to your first your, you know, your first job, what, you know, had, what would be some of the biggest changes that you've seen in the trade kind of, you know, perhaps technologically in that time from then to now? Well, there's a couple of things. Uh, the safety, when I started safety was just on the, on the cusp of uh, getting to where we are now. It was, uh, you know, uh, West Ray wasn't too far uh, out of people's minds. Um, uh, and that's where it, it started to go. So that 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 was huge. It, it grew. Uh, technology wise, uh, ICF forms was huge. Uh, that's insulated concrete forms. So instead of doing the old wood or Perry system or whatever you, uh, whatever's floating around now, uh, um, much lighter, uh, more energy efficient, easier to work with and, um, battery operated tools. I keep saying to the guys, uh, <laughs> all my guys, I walk on a job site and we've got, everything is virtually battery operated. There's no running around looking for cords. Yeah. It's so easy and mobile to do work. Uh, I, I, um, I tell the guys like, Honestly, like 15 years ago, if all if we would be where we are now, I I wouldn't have left the field. It, <laughs> it, 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 it's so interesting. Like there's so much things that yeah, it's great. Uh, and, and technology keeps moving. I see a lot of uh, we're very good at adapting to the new uh, IT. Like you know, our our guys, a lot of our guys have iPads. Uh, yeah. We have uh, iPhones. We're, we're using smart TVs in our job trailers. We're putting um, drawings up on that, and we're we're able to use this uh, the smaller equipment right out in the field. Uh, 
fantastic. A lot of saves a lot of a lot of travel on site, a lot of walk. Like it's instantaneous. You're looking at the problem while you're looking at the detail. Right. You're, you're not running back and forth the the job trailer. Yeah, that's one of the that's one of the biggest things I see. Yeah, uh, the safety aspect is fantastic. It's uh, you know yeah. especially for any young people, you know exploring a career in the industry to hear that is is certainly a positive yeah yeah um another question so looking back again to kind of when you were getting into the industry and when you were starting what was for you probably the the hardest part of the trade the hardest part uh of the trade well hmm um I guess getting your name when when you get going and you get out you get out of school or you go direct entry, the biggest thing is uh, in the construction trades uh, you got to build up your name. Yeah. Uh, um, I came from a, I can I come from Antigonish County. Uh, not too many contractors there, so the big thing was to get out, get experience, get your name out there uh, that you're you know you're you're a good worker. Uh, mm -hmm. You're an apprentice. You're not expected to know everything, but you, you're expected to show up on time, work hard, uh, take direction, um, and just have a positive a a attitude and be willing to ask questions yeah. and own up to your mistakes. The big thing that was the biggest thing that it, I wouldn't say it was hard. It was the biggest challenge yet to build that name. And once your name got known, that oh yeah, that that guy's good. And the other sub trades would would talk. They, they talk amongst yeah. contractors. Um, and once, once you get to a certain level, it definitely got easier. Uh, when work got low from one contractor, you'd reach out and then you pick up more work, you keep going. So that's, that was one of the challenges and, and hard parts. And it was a really tough economic time back then too. In the early nineties, when I got out of an SCC, it was, it was tough, uh, a lot different than now. I'd love to be 23 now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> For a lot of reasons. <laughs> For a lot of reasons, yeah. yeah. Uh, that, that's great to hear you say that, actually, because that, that, that's one of the biggest, probably the most common things I hear whenever I'm talking to someone in the industry in regards to young people and in regards to the trade is, we can teach you to the trade. The hands-on piece, you know, that's, there's work that goes into it, but we can teach you that. It's the, you know, it's the st other stuff. It's the showing up on time. It's having the right attitude, asking the questions. It's all attitude. It's, it's, it's all attitude. Uh, my instructor, I remember, I don't remember much of what he told me, but one thing stuck with me. He said, your guys are going to be graduating soon. And this was like a couple of weeks before we graduated. And he said, I, I hope you learned enough in our class that you realize you don't know everything. You barely <laughs> know anything at all. And that, and I, I didn't get it. And then I was, I, I thought about it on the drive home because it was about a half hour drive and it clicked in it. Yeah. I, he is right. I, I know the general stuff, but to actually get into the weeds and start doing work. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff. I don't know a lot. I, I don't know a lot more than I, uh, yeah. And, I, and I'm still learning every day. So very good. Um, something we, uh, that we always like to promote to the students, and I spoke to it a little bit right off the cuff today, is, is obviously the benefits and, and some of the great things that come you know, with working in the construction trades. In your experience, the salary, the benefits uh, that come with being a, a certified carpenter, how do those compare to other occupations you know, that maybe friends or family or other people in the community that you may know? Uh, we don't have to get into specific dollars and cents necessarily. I know actually you're a little low on your on your higher end uh, in a unionized uh, environment if you're lucky to be able to engage in that. I know like my my guys that don't get laid off uh, are above yeah. that plus the pension and other benefits that they do get. It's we're we're right up there uh, with uh, people that you know we're we're up there with teachers. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're in that, we're in that ball range, um, even bank managers, like people you wouldn't think, uh, plus the opportunity, there's, there's a lot of opportunities when it comes to carpentry too. Um, so, uh, <laughs> you can do your work, your own work at home. Let's put it that way. Uh, and also work, uh, work for people on the weekends, uh, stuff like that. Uh, there's always, there's always that advantage and, 
and once you get built up so high to the, the possibility of starting your own business, yeah. it's there too. It's all how you want to do it, right? And, and that's a perfect lead in, Howie, to the role that you're, you're currently in. Uh, obviously, now that you're on more on the construction management side and, and you manage, oversee, hire trades people, what, are, what kind of skills and qualities are you looking for uh, in a young tradesperson, someone who's new in, new in the industry? If, if we're talking strictly apprentice, uh, somebody coming into the trade, attitude. The can-do attitude, uh, um, wanting to come in, like I said, on time, eager to work, uh, respectful, um, uh, safety-driven. Um, we here at Lindsay and, and most of our competitors, uh, safety is not a joke. It is... Uh, if you're expected and you're told to wear a harness, you better have it on and be wearing it right. Uh, so we, we'd like that. We, we'd like somebody that with that kind of mindset. Um, but it's, it's the can do wanting, wanting to know, want, wanting to ask the questions, uh, wanting, wanting to learn, uh, someone that comes in with the, that we can see the light is on and they want to have responsibilities. Uh, we can build into a supervisor um, or, or somebody that we can trust to, you know, if the supervisor leaves to go get a coffee or pick up a sheet of plywood, we know uh, Jude or Jill is on site. So we're covered off. We got that comfort. That's what we're looking for. Very good. I got a question coming in on the Q&A and I think it, it fits really good with, with what we were just talking about, Howie. And, and this is a question that we get often from young people. It, what advice would you give a young person for how to ask for a reference? We get a lot of students who are, are looking to get their foot into the industry. They're looking for a reference, but they're, they're, they're pretty intimidated. What, what kind of advice would you give those young people? Uh, go to somebody you know and you trust and, and have a, a upfront conversation. Um, so if, it, and it doesn't have to be, if you're, if you're new to the trade, you're not expected to come to someone that's in a, a director's position that I might have uh, said hi to you once and get a reference. Go to the, the person that you had a summer job for maybe pumping gas or cutting lawn for and say, I need a letter of reference, you know, just somebody that's going to be honest and, and, you know, be able to represent you in the light that you want to be represented. Uh, it doesn't have to be trade specific. No. No. Excellent. Again, looking at uh, kind of the role that you're in now in the construction management side of things, how do you feel that your previous experience as a trade person prepared you for that? Oh, uh, <laughs> it's invaluable. I, uh, I, I, I have the luxury of when somebody tells me, well, we can't do it that fast. I've been in the trench. Um, I've worked when it was minus 36. I've worked when it was plus 36. I, I know the production, how production will drop either way. You, um, it's harder to BS me. Let's just say it like that. Um, and that's what I'm very thankful of having. I, I have a good sense of how I know how long stuff should be able to take um, and how stuff works in the extreme weather that we have here. That's one of the, that's one of the, I had written down on my, uh, my little cheat sheet here of one of the things I loved and didn't like about the trade uh, and being a tradesperson is the weather. Um, when it's really hot or really cold or damp, uh, sometimes the, the five degree temperature with everything soaked is worse than being minus 20, uh, is really hard on the body. It's really hard for production. You, if it's minus 20, it's hard to take a, a screw or nail out of your pouch and, and, and use it. Um, but when it's 12, 15, 18 degrees, that was my favorite that like it's it, beautiful. You know, the sun's on your shoulders, you're out, uh, you're, you're working with your friends cause your, your partners usually become your best friends cause you're just chatting all day. And, um, that was one of the benefits. So, yeah. Oh, that's excellent. Um, 
you know, I, we have talked, I, I guess one thing I'd like to ask you about as well, and when I talked about kind of how earlier, how the industry, you know, changes that have been made from when you started to now. Um, another area where I think we're starting to move the needle quite a bit is, is diversity in the industry. Um, and, and we're very fortunate to get an opportunity to get in front of, you know, all kinds of different people, young men and young women. Uh, and I'd be curious if, if you had uh, kind of any advice that you might would share for a young lady who would be looking to enter the construction trades. Uh, two words, do it. Um, it's back, uh, you know, 25, 30 years ago, uh, when I was getting into the trade, it was, it, you had to be a big brute. Your, the, the foreign panels I was using weighed, oh, they weighed a hundred pounds, brand new, without never having any concrete on them. Um, it, it was tough. Everything seemed very heavy and I was a big guy. Uh, like the saws where everything was heavy. Now everything lightened up. It's a lot easier to work. Um, it's, it's, it just got a lot better. It got smarter. Uh, I think we, we did a shift. Um, we, you, you had spoken about it, how like there's the, the, the trades are really, uh, becoming premium. We need to get more people into the trades. Right. The emphasis went on, um, the human resource, how can we engage more people coming into the trades? How do we keep them there? Uh, breaking their back after five years is not a good way of keeping them there. Uh, so a lot of work policies have been developed. Um, you know, if you, if you can go for groceries, you can work in the trades. Yeah, pretty much. If you can go and buy a bag of potatoes, get a, a four liter uh, gallon of milk out of the, or a four liter, a jug of milk out of the fridge, you could be a tradesperson. There's going to be a limitation. Some people, you know, don't become an iron worker if you don't like heights. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's, there's, there's that kind of limitation, obviously. But yeah, it, there's, I can't think of a trade where you've got to be a 6'4, 260 pound, you know, individual to do this. So, um, and it's, it's all about passion. Uh, if you really like what you do, if you're really driven to quality um, and production uh, is a big thing, you're going to be successful. Excellent. Uh, that, that's awesome to hear, Howie. Um, the last question that I have for you, Howie, and this is something that I, I, I plan to ask everyone who we do with this series, um, is do you have any fun, funny, or, or just strange stories perhaps from your experience in the industry? Uh, well, every day, like it, that was, that was the, the part that I really miss is going into the site trailer. You know, um, I was always, I loved it so much. I'd show up uh, 45 minutes, at least 45 minutes to a half hour early for work. We'd sit in there. I'd, I loved going in with the older partners and the tell the all, they were telling us all old stories. So almost <laughs> every day I was just busting a gut. You'd go in at break, same thing, dinner, same thing. It's just when you get a good bunch of people uh, and and, uh, um, uh, and I find most people like to have good people working for them. You get a, once you get that good balance uh, and, and sense going, it, it's really good. Uh, and, and it just makes, it's enjoyable place. Um, construction is an enjoyable place to work. Yeah. We, we, we have to cover off each other like, um, you have to, you have to get the trust. You have to get that friendship going. So everybody's going to be watching your back. It is safety did come a long way, but we are still dealing with massive pieces of material moving, swinging. There's on uh, the, the, the walking is very rough. It's, you know, the terrain is rough. There's sharp pieces of everything sticking up everywhere, <laughs> even, you know, it, it's, it's, it is dangerous. Uh, and, and to, you have to have that family kind of uh, model going forward that, you know, if somebody sees that you might be doing something you shouldn't, or you're heading towards danger, somebody's going to say, whoa, stop. Somebody's got your back. Right. Um, that's what I miss the big time. Yeah. That's great to hear. I, we, we do have another question coming in on the Q and A. 
Um, and the question is around, and this is another one that we get from, from students uh, all the time when, when they're just entering the industry or, or getting placed perhaps through the Building Futures for Youth program, uh, is around the challenge of transportation. If a young person doesn't have a license or, or doesn't have a vehicle, uh, are, are there ways, are there opportunities for students and young people to still, or I shouldn't say young people, older people as well, uh, who are new to the industry, are there opportunities for them uh, to connect and, and get to the locations? Yeah, obviously it's going to depend where you live, right? Uh, up here, we, we do have a bus service. Um, and it's all about uh, the communication with your superintendent. Like a lot of our, our supervisors, they, they have families. They understand how things work. Uh, if we can make accommodations, we certainly will now. Um, if you're residential, uh, and you're building houses for a smaller uh, contractor and you're going to be moving, you could be working at one house shingling roof uh, in the morning and you're expected to be over at another place 20 miles away in the afternoon, that gets tricky. Uh, usually on our sites, when you get sent there, you're not going to be moved during the day. You're going to be there for weeks and weeks and weeks and then we then the next one well you're going to be going to the next site and you're you're probably going to be there for this time um so it's all a communication just right. be up front uh, ask the question how you can make it work um yeah and and once you get that sense of family you'd be surprised how close people are and in, instead of the 20 mile trip you might just have to make it a couple miles down the road and you're getting in with someone and you're getting to work. Yeah. I, another question coming in on the Q&A, and I think this is a great question. You, you spoke earlier about sometimes you come in when you're in the city, you drive around to see yeah. some of the projects you might be, have been a part of. Is there one particular project that stands out to you that you're most proud of? Uh, not really. I'm, pr I'm proud of all of them. Um, they all have their little, every time I go by any job I did I get flashbacks of, you know, uh, when they opened, uh, when the first time the uh, uh, the clients walked in and saw it. I know um, I had the opportunity four or five years ago, I rebuilt a church in Sydney. Uh, and I remember the choir had not been in it until we were almost complete. We were just putting on, I think we were putting the pews in. And when they came in, they all started crying like they, you know, their 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 first grandchild was born. Um, you know, stories like that, that almost every every building that I've done, I have a story or a, or a memory of something like that. It's usually always good. Yeah. I've been lucky. Yeah. That's fantastic. That's a great question. That's a great answer. Um, we are at, at 2.42, and again, I want to be respectful of, of your time and everyone else's. Uh, was there anything, I know you say you got a, a cheat sheet there, How is there anything else you, you wanted to add or a message perhaps to, you know, for young people, for students, or anyone uh, who might be considering a career in construction, and certainly a, a career in the, in the carpentry trade? Well, carpentry is a, a great, great, great trade. It has so many facets to it. Um, depending where you live and what your passion is you can really uh dive in and become a specialist if you really love doing concrete and you're up in halifax or or even in sydney there's there's enough uh work in that kind of piece of the market that you could probably stay busy drywall is another aspect there there's so many um different venues that you can that you can dive right in and do what you really love if you're out in the rural areas, you're probably not able to do that. If you want to stay in your rural areas, you're going to be more of a generalist. Um, I like hiring the generalists uh, because um, a, a lot of the trades, when you go through uh, your strength in concrete is a lot of engineering. It's a lot of on-site engineering. So it helps you when you get in the framing. Um, you get really good at problem solving. I bet. Uh, most, all my supers up here in Sydney, all carpenters. Uh, mm -hmm. I know a lot of our competitors and we have a lot of carpenters in, in the city that work for us as supers as well. Um, because you're on site, um, you see what the other trades are doing. Other trades cannot come in 
Um, the sheet metal guys aren't there when the foundation's being poured. They're not there when, you know, the walls are going up. There's so much of the uh, buildings have to be done before other trades can come in where carpenters, I've been on projects where I was there when the hole was being dug until the last screw was turned and we did the turnover to the owner and you saw everything going in helps you to grow. You know how to schedule jobs. You just learn so much. Um, it's a great trade. It's, it really is. I've, I've, I've enjoyed it and all, all the people I work really seem to enjoy it. That's excellent. We'll have to, uh, we'll have to borrow you how the next time we go on the road to the schools, I think you can, uh, can sell the trade better than we can. <laughs> well, I try. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. How I really appreciate that. And again, it's, it's two forty-five now and I, I want to be as respectful as I can for everyone's time. Uh, Howie, Lindsay construction, uh, again, really, really appreciate you guys making the time for us this afternoon. I know I learned, uh, an awful lot. I'm, I'm quite confident that anyone tuned in uh, learned quite a lot. And I know that people who get to see the recording coming up will get to learn a lot as well. So thank uh, you very much for that. Um, been a and, pleasure, Alan. Great. If anyone, uh, you know, comes away from this and has a question that they didn't get a chance to ask, uh, by all means, please reach out to me. My website, all, or my, all my contact information is available on our CAMS website, www.cams.ns.ca. Any questions, I can connect with Howie on your behalf and uh, we can get you any information that you need. Um, so again, Howie, I, re I really appreciate it. I appreciate everyone who signed in. Again, thank you to our partners as well for your support in, in uh, delivering this initiative. Um, and the last thing I'll say is keep an eye out for next week's registration as well, uh, where we're going to be joined by journey person welder and operations manager at RKO Steel, uh, Doug Ware. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. And uh, hopefully it's as, as uh, entertaining as informative as today's session was. So thank you very much, Howie, and thank you very much, everyone else, for, for joining us. Thanks, Alan. Everybody Thanks, Alan. Go, wash your hands. go wash your hands. That's right. Absolutely. Stay safe, everyone. Yeah.